Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. My name is Amy Mather, and I'm the Adult Services Manager for Omaha Public Library. I am delighted to kick off our first event for Omaha Reads. And some of you may be familiar with Omaha Reads, and some of you may not. So let me tell you a little bit more about that. So Omaha Reads is a campaign to promote literacy and provide our city with one common theme to discuss. And one book is selected each year and celebrated with book discussions, author visits, and related programs and events. And this year's uh, Omaha Reads winner, you'll never believe what happened to Lacey, crazy stories about racism, star and executive producer of the Amber Ruffin Show, writes with her sister Lacey with humor and heart to share absurd anecdotes about everyday experiences of racism. Tonight is our first event in our Omaha Reads programming series, and over the next few weeks, we will have book discussions coming up and a closing reflection. You can find out more about our programming by visiting Omaha Public Library's website or check over to the right hand side in the chat and we will post um, links to all the things we're talking about tonight. So visit omahalibrary.org to find more information. Some housekeeping to tell you about. So I wanna tell you about a few ways you could participate in tonight's event. Um, so the chat is on the right hand side of your screen and it is open for viewers to discuss or comment on during the event. You're also welcome to ask a question. You will see that at the bottom of your screen. So feel free um, along with the chat to post your questions and we will move through the questions at the end of the program. And this event is recorded so you can come back and view it at any time. Also, copies of the book can be checked out from us. We will post a link in the chat where you can um, check that out. And if you'd like to purchase the book, we are partnering with The Bookworm to sell Amber Ruff and, and Lacey Lamar's books. So um, you can click on buy the book from The Bookworm below. Let me tell you a little bit about our authors. So the authors are sisters and both originally from Omaha. Amber Ruffin lives in New York and works as the host of the Amber Ruffin Show. And Lacey Lamar still lives in Omaha, Nebraska and shares stories from racist donut shops to strangers putting their whole hand in her hair, from being mistaken for a prostitute to being mistaken for Harriet Tubman. These absurd anecdotes illustrate everyday experiences of racism with humor and heart. So it is my pleasure to bring on board in this virtual space. Here we go, Lacey Lamar and Amber Ruffin, welcome. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I know. So everyone, I'm gonna be asking questions from the corner because I wanted to make sure that we have these two beautiful ladies in front of us the entire time. So thank you so much for being here. And we're so excited about your book. And um, I'm sure people are going to have lots of questions. I already see some popping in, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the very first question. So where did the idea for this book come from? And a little add on to that is why did you decide to actually write it? Uh, the, I had a meeting with the book guy. Yeah. I didn't want a meeting with the book guy. I didn't want to write a book. I never really thought about it, but we had a meeting. And then on the way to the meeting, Lacey had texted me one of these hilarious stories. And so then when I got there, I said, you know what we could do this book of where my sister just tells all of her hilarious stories. And yeah. we did. And also it just was this running joke between friends and family when something ridiculous would happen to me they would always say, oh, that's going into the book. You know, you know, you need to write a book and something would happen and they would say, oh, that's chapter 12 or that's chapter 13. It's like, it's like we would always talk about this book, you know, be joking about it all the time. But uh, then when the chance came. Did you have like a group text going on with like all these stories or was it through email? Like, how did you collect all these like stories? So 
most of the stories <laughs> were when I would I would be at work and something like this would happen, uh, something racist, something inappropriate, and I needed to um, go to HR and say, um, Larry called me this in the morning meeting. I would journal everything down at work. I would write everything down as it, sometimes as it was happening, who was there, who saw it, what time, like very detailed because in HR, as a person of color, you have to have everything, all your T's crossed, not all your I's so that they know you didn't make it up. It really did happen. Who can say that they were there that saw it? Like, so that's why I wrote down all these stories in great detail. Like I would go back and read them and be like, oh my goodness, like I can't, I forgot about this. So we just had so much material to go off. That's why people are like, how can you remember all this stuff? Because I wrote down every last detail. And that's why we have so many. And sometimes you just can't forget something that is this ridiculous. <laughs> it's seared into your brain. You can't forget it. But like little details that we have in the story, it's because I would be writing it down. We are so glad that you wrote it all down. <laughs> So um, next question, who would you like to read this book? Who do you think it's a, because I remember actually, I think an interview uh, from you, Lacey, and, and both of you is that you, one thing that stuck in my head was like HR, HR, like this would be a great book for HR folks to have, but who, who else would you like to read this book? Tell me more about that. Every person in the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who's in the book. <laughs> yes. Everyone who has a job who has to talk to people. <laughs> right. You need to read this book because you might be saying and doing some of these things and not and not realizing that you're doing it. Right. And who interact with other people. People who speak to other people. Yeah. People who look at other people. Yeah. When I, you're in the same world as other people, <laughs> then you should go ahead and read this book. Yeah. So literally everyone. Everyone needs to every read. single person. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> So what has been the most surprising reaction you have had since um, all, your book has been published, both good and both not so good? For me, just the most, not really surprising reaction, just the most surprising thing is that I haven't had any anger towards me. I, I was waiting the minute that book came out. I was like, my phone's going to blow up. There are going to be some angry people. And then I'm in, I'm in New York for a month. Nothing's happening. Nobody's angry. No one's saying anything. Then I get back to Omaha and I'm waiting. Not, people have come up to me and I'm like, here it comes. And they're like, that book was great. I am, I do some of those things. I didn't realize I was doing some of those things. And I'm going to try to change this when I go. I mean, just everything has been positive. Knock on wood. I'm serious. Everything. There's not been one person going, hey, you wrote that book. You're talking about Omaha, like that hasn't happened. I'm not saying that it won't, but so that to me is like, wow, this is a, uh, was not expecting that at all. I was expecting to get it from some people and not right. that I care because you did that behavior. I'm gonna write about it. I don't care. Right. But, yeah. I wasn't afraid of the conflict and all that, but I just was surprised that it did not happen. And especially to some of the people who look, they know who they are. I thought I was going to get a call from some of them and and, and, and they would be angry they were not, I had a couple calls from people that were in the book and they were like, yeah, that was bad. <laughs> I didn't realize wow. that it was. No yeah. one has been like, ah. There was one funny, surprising thing where a lady called me at very, it was like within a couple days after the book was released and said, I was reading the book and I thought at first that was me, but no, that wasn't me. And I said, no, that was you. <laughs> then we talked about it and it was okay. Wow. So this really has opened up a lot of discussion. Truly, yeah, for yeah, sure. It really has. And Amber, what about you? What happened like when in New York did did anything? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do think that the word racism being yeah. in the title, it, you know, people who ain't with it are not gonna read it. I mean because right. people who can't stand it think about racism like they're not going to read the book yep. because they they're scared of the very word right they bristle yeah, yeah. we should have said crazy stories about mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we should have said we should and have we should have <laughs> and then they were like hey i think this is about racism <laughs> <laughs> wow so um yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so Lacey, you were telling me we, um, so Lacey and I had met for coffee and you were telling me that you've gotten a Facebook 
friend request and now that you have a pen pal. Do you want to tell that story? Um, oh, about- yeah, that was that was the lady that texted me on the very first uh, night uh, that the book came out, the very first day. And she first said, you know what? And she was a much older lady. I think she was like 80. And she said, I don't think these stories are racist at all. I think you're just... I think you're just misunderstanding how things are being said, you know, something along those lines. Right. And I was like, absolutely not. And I had to, I mean, I was breaking it down. That was my first person that I was like, oh, well, this is weird. Well, let me keep talking to her. <laughs> if that had been like the 20th person, I would have been like, no, I'm not lady. Read the book again. But I just was like, okay, let me talk to her and let me try to come. And I tried to convince her and I was talking to her. And as I was talking to her and would break it down, like, what if you were the only white people in the room and everyone was stroking your hair saying what, you know, and I had to break it down. And all I did was turn it and flip the tables on and like, now what if this was you and you had to be the, you know, right. and then she would be like, I completely understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I went, oh, now that makes sense. Right. So then afterwards she was like, I think you're on to something. <laughs> <laughs> so she just became my little New York pit pal. That's what I called her to check with her. <laughs> Got a pen pal. I haven't oh, heard that from a long time, but I love it. <laughs> I know she thinks we're pen pals. <laughs> I love I like it. to write a good letter. <laughs> so some of these stories date back to your childhood. Does it feel like Omaha is moving forward at all? That is every t- I No. Say- <laughs> okay. Everyone asks us this, and I just say at a snail. I know yeah. people want to think that we're moving forward, it's progressive, we're doing it. No, nah, it doesn't feel that way all the time. There right. are people trying to do some change and trying to move things forward. And I appreciate that. And I love the people that are out there doing all that. Um, and they're working hard. Um, but it's slowly, slowly but surely. No, yeah, it's just, a, it is happening, but it is very slow. And like, the opposite is happening. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. People are see are uh, becoming enlightened, and then people are becoming empowered to be racist. So it's happening at the same time. Yeah. So it's kind of like canceling each other out. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah, is very interesting. Like what we are seeing right now, for sure. Yeah. Um. Are there stories that you wish that was included in the book that maybe had made, didn't, that didn't make it in? Now, yes, only, and not only because, um, again, once the book came out, I got flooded with, why didn't you tell this story? And I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot. So I'm like, I know there's a missing journal or two out there. I got to dig through it fine. But people that were actually like in the room with me, were calling me, um, yeah, some close friends were like, why didn't you tell the story? It, uh, we talk about it all the time. And I was like, oh, you're right. So book two. Yeah, book two, right, book exactly. Two. Yeah, I, re- I remember seeing it also a video. It's like you, it was, it was on your publisher's website and you talk about like, well, here it comes. I'm going to have to like, you were, you seem like you're always like, all right, I'm going to bring this to light and talk about like why you're being racist. And then ultimately you would always like, all right, I'm going to lose my job because I'm going to bring this up. And that, yeah, I'm really (laughs) a lot. So I can imagine how tough that was just in Omaha being like, okay, we we're I'm going to lose my job, but I'm going to, hopefully these people will learn a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you all working on now? Book two. two. (laughs) That's real. And where, when do we, when will we expect to see this? We would be, um, we're so excited. (laughs) I don't know. Next year, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. Awesome. It depends on how many terrible things happen to us <laughs> while we're writing it. Like if right. a lot of terrible things happen, it's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> then you know we gotta gather more. No, I'm just kidding. So Lacey, are you still like journaling? Like, okay, here's I'm another one. Writing. I'm still writing. I'm trying not to be like uh so old and sometimes I, I put things in my phone. <laughs> just doesn't seem the same though. Right. Dear journal. <laughs> 
Today Clifford called me a brownie <laughs> because I'm a sweet chocolate dessert. <laughs> And that's the voice I use as I work. Uh, yeah, you could tell the pen has a big feather on it. A pew. A pew. <laughs> Dipping it into well, the ink. In the ink. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah, the ink well she goes. Yeah. She's old yeah. fashioned. Lace is old fashioned. I am. Right, 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 right. So um, do you, so I know also, aside from the book that um, we, I just saw some videos that you are doing for the CDC. Do you want to tell everybody about, yeah, I love it. It's hilarious because the first <laughs> one that I saw was like, dear God, this is the question that I always have when I enter into this room. So do you all want to tell everybody your little partnership that you have with the um, CDC? Yeah, we did a web series for the CDC about gynecological health yeah. and how women are a little unwilling to be fully honest at the gynecologist. Like, you know, they are downplaying their own pain. They're not saying every last uh, 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 detail about changes their bodies are having. Um, right. So we made a web series hoping to convince women to be more straightforward when they're at the doctor. I love it. I absolutely love it. And how did that come about? Like, did they just like, okay, they, um, probably from the very, very direct honesty through your book, they were like, okay, these are the two perfect women who can talk about these things and help empower women when they're in the doctor's office. You know, I didn't ask, but I just assumed that that was why. But I mean, well, we'll list that as the reason. <laughs> now, I saw this lady on the bus. She was talking to her sister. And I couldn't see her sister, but she sounded fun. Let's put them in a video. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so it's probably the book. <laughs> Well, I'm going to look at the questions. Um, we have like lots of um, questions here. So I'm going to get that up. Um, okay, while you get that up, uh, this is sponsored by Sprite. <laughs> it's, sponsored by, it's sponsored by, it's sponsored by wine. Yes. Awesome. And what kind of wine? Are we drinking wine? It's just a Chardonnay. <laughs> Dear uh, journal, so I had a Chardonnay. It's a cab, if you must know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go from that, just from going from question one. So here's the first question. Has, um, what was your reaction when you found out that Omaha had selected your book for Omaha Reads? Oh, we were very excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cool. I, I had heard of Omaha Reads. So awesome. I thought, oh, wow, that's neat. Um, ah, I'll never remember the book that I first noticed that uh, oh, that, that made me realize Omar oh, Reads was a thing. But yeah, I thought it was cool. It's always um, nice to have a reason to come back to Omar. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I was surprised and excited. Good. It was wonderful. We were, we were excited to see it when and it got obviously all the votes so we were very excited we were like <laughs> celebrating along with you guys <laughs> yeah that was good yeah all right next question has jc penny apologized to you <laughs> no, no they have <laughs> i walked past there yesterday and i was like if i go in there people are gonna see me and be like you're in here what are you doing I'm sorry. With the secret knock. Yeah, I want to see if that's if it's still there. Oh yeah, my gosh, we should go knock on it. What? We should too. go knock on it. We're knocking on it. Don't tell Jay Don't say anything. We're gonna knock on it tomorrow. Okay. We're going. We We're gonna knock. I'm not kidding. We're gonna knock. Yeah. On. To be continued. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, we'll put that in the second book. We'll put that in the book. We'll put that Look at what you started. Mm -hmm. No. We're doing it. We're knocking on the door. Okay. We, um, if you don't mind, would you uh, text me and let me know how? I got you. <laughs> okay. Awesome. <laughs> I, got, I got you. I'm doing it. Awesome. I and I uh, love it. 
All right. We're going to knock on the door. They're going to swing it open and go, hey, you, get in here. Hey, you, or, Oh, my God. <laughs> or give them a book. Here you go. <laughs> Ooh, you are so right. Yeah. yeah. That's, a great idea. that's a great idea. Knock, 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 knock. knock. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> Prezi for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the audiobook was so great. What was the recording process like for you both? It was so easy and so fun. I don't know why I thought it was going to take days and days, and it was pretty just straightforward and easy because it's just how we speak to each other. So, right. Yeah. It was. And... It was fun though, but not very long. I thought it was going to be much longer. Yeah, it's pretty easy because it is. It's how we talk. Right. So, yeah, there was no. <laughs> right. Twisting or turning a yeah. kind of language to do. Right. Well, that's good. Um, when you read the book, it seems like someone just transcribed a conversation between the two of you because it's so familiar and fun. What was the writing process actually like for you both? Kind of just that. The writing process was very easy. You know, people are always like, there oh was gosh, you wrote a book. Was it wine hard? involved. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on my parents' couch at this computer. Laughing and laughing and laughing. And yeah. Speaking of your parents, how did they, um, did they love the book? Uh, what was their <laughs> reaction? <laughs> at me. Um, are your parents what, watching? What is the answer? <laughs> look at, um, look at the Amy, answer look at is we are still in trouble for <gasps> some things. Oh no. Right? Yeah, we're still in trouble, but we're adults. We doing our own thing. Oh, right. Yeah. This right. isn't plugged in. <laughs> we're charging our lives. <laughs> oh no. It's a little low. I was trying to be what is this? incognito or not, not just unplug it. Um, I was trying to be figurative and try to plug it up at the same time. Uh, but no, my mom and dad don't want any, like, they don't want to be talked about. They just want to go in under the radar. So we're in a little bit of trouble, but we're fine, right. guys. Right. Oh, good. Amber's the one that's grounded. I'm, hey, I'm still out. <laughs> so is it brought up at family dinners or holidays and they're like, you know, they're. It's not. No, no, there also hasn't really been a lot because of COVID. Yeah. Right. Ex yeah. So um, we're we kind had of like, avoiding the sure. trouble. Yeah, exactly. I know we had a very short window of being social and that has out the door. Because um, as we were writing the book, what tell them what mom said to you. Did she come down and was like, don't put me in the book. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, ma'am. We will not put you in the book. But someone, I don't live here. Put her in the book. <laughs> I'm not going to. She's not going to catch me. <laughs> I told her, I'm not doing it. I'm not putting you in the book. And I said, I'll do what I want, mommy. You're not the boss. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. You can tell because I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe they're not watching right now. And they're like, they're when can we get them. home? Yes. <laughs> no, they don't know how to, how to watch. <laughs> they don't. And are those also, and all the stories we told with mom and them were all just not it's, it, it, there's stories where she's giving someone the business what? <laughs> never like you know but those are the only mommy stories in there because that's what yeah. the book is about right but she is a nice person oh absolutely unless <laughs> Definitely right. Unless you cross her, and then, <laughs> and then you'll see the other side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Somebody asked, like, what can we do when we see someone doing or say something racist? You slept. No, just <laughs> you. Um. I like to say that you just say the. You tell the truth. Like that person is confused. It's like if you saw someone trying to open a can with a remote control, you'd be like, oopsie, you're doing this wrong. 
there's a better way to do this. You know, like they, you know, they have mistaken, right? The, you know, fundamentals of life, right? I mean, truly, a lot yeah. of people are all the way upside down, and it's, and that's, I think, how you should look at it. Like, right. if a baby is trying to eat pasta with a, a comb, you right? Don't do that, right? And you go, who gave you that comb, baby? <laughs> Right. Um, let me see. We had oh, I just moved back to Nebraska after forty years in D.C. I am a white slash Native American in in D.C. I took for granted that I had black coworkers, supervisors, friends, and neighbors. Here in West Omaha, I see a few black people, which freaks me out in itself. And several of the ones I do see are extremely polite to the point that it makes me sad. I assume that black people in Omaha have felt like they have had to be very polite in order to be accepted by whites. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You got it, bud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but freaking don't let it make you sad that this is their journey and they are on it alone. So, you know, it's how did they, like, you can't fault a person for surviving you know, like, right. and, and they're in it right now. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's see. Um, Lacey, after the leaf Erickson horror, did you ever consider going into art? That is a whole nother story. But yes, I still love art. I think that I'm like, well, I got the Afro. So Bob Ross, you know, oh. <laughs> though I didn't see the drama on Netflix. So I saw it. I take it all back. It I don't know. If it's, okay. Um, yeah, I love Bob Ross. <laughs> Uh, and I That's literally great. made my, I made my dad buy me. There was a Bob Ross kit that you could buy at Dick Blick and it had the video and the paint and the oil painting and the easel and everything. <laughs> so I thought, I was going to be a famous artist. That is still awesome. Could still could be. No, I still love art. Is I still love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Reminded uh, of an interview that you all had with Seth, Seth Myers. And if everybody is, um, you still write for Seth Myers, right, Amber? Yes. I do. And it was uh, when you all both, you all were adorable, wearing the same exact dress, uh, which was hilarious going on there. And I remember that you were talking about growing up um, as kids and that your mom would go and buy lots of like boxes of books. Mm -hmm. And that you knew, <laughs> you were like, I am an expert in identifying all the rocks and gemstones and we can build a sailboat at the same time. Yes. <laughs> so, what what um, loves or like what was like your fun thing that you really sort of glommed onto like is like part of like reading all these little things because I I just it was awesome to hear that because it was really fun just to imagine you all walking around like it's like oh let's learn this today yeah my well mom and dad oh next door to I don't have to explain it we all know where it is Nathan Hale across mm -hmm. the way across the street from Nathan Hale was this big barn weird barn and they would have like a book auction and right. so it would just be a box a big box of books and they'd be like this book has you know it the joy of sex um <laughs> you know and um typewriting for mm -hmm. dummies and that's all you knew about what was going to be in the box and then the rest of it was who knows what so they would always just buy the lot because of the three or four titles they heard and then you get who knows what it'd be children's books and it'd be like f through p encyclopedias <laughs> and the, you know <laughs> it was this random stuff and it was the best like yeah. we had belly dance we learned how books. to belly dance yeah. i'm telling you from a book from a book wow yeah, well. We're not great. I am a professional belly dancer She's because of that book. Bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> Learning how to dance from a book. It's not, it's the books didn't exist. It's a terrible idea. I, think it's a I would have to be really hard to do. 
That'd be like easy. learning how to paint by me easy. telling you right. what to do. <laughs> All right. We did have Bob Ross though. Yeah, Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah. So what are you all reading now or what do you like to read? Like, what is your jam? I like anything um, sci-fi. That is like, I'm a big science fiction nerd. So anything fantasy, I love it, love it, love it. I almost it, never uh, sit down with a book ever because I write all day and all night, every day. So when I get a free minute, the last thing I want to do is look at more words because I have seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> she has seen enough. Words. Seen a lot of words. I can't do it. Right. Oh, I can imagine. Um, do you draw? Like I'm thinking, Amber. Do you just draw? Like you're just walking down the street or sitting somewhere, and you're like, "Yep, gonna write about that." And you're just like writing constantly and have a book that you're just. Um, a little, but mostly now I'm trained. Okay. I know that when it's Saturday morning and Sunday morning, I'm going to spend four hours writing. Right. Every Saturday and Sunday morning. Right. And that's just how it's going to be. Um, you know, and there really aren't a, a lot of other times to be like, oh, I'm going to sit down and flesh this out. So it's like, it just will come out then. Awesome. So what books have had an impact on your life? Thank you for asking. But first, just a quick word from our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> and who was that sponsor? Like, I'm going to go with um, just books that I think everybody knows. Like I loved The Bluest Eye. I loved The Color Purple. I had to steal The Color Purple and read it under my bed because it had naughty moments in there. Um, <laughs> Just books that empowered Black people and that that um, you read and you saw yourself in. But I'm also going to flip it and say Lord of the Rings. And I got in trouble for carrying around my Lord of the Rings book at school. And I kept reading it. And I wasn't reading the other books. But I love Lord of the Rings. I read them all over a million times. Okay. Wow. That's a problem. <laughs> the Lord, the Lord of, of the Rings. Rings. The Lord of the Rings of me. Um, yeah, she really... Um, love and used to read. Remember when we read James and the Giant Peach, and you read it to me because I hurt my hand. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. <gasps> oh, Lisa! I mean, I remember. Yay! It was a great, Yay. moment. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, we read it. That's a, a big book. That's we read it every book. night. I'd be like, Oh, I yeah. hurt myself. Okay, we'll read James and the Giant Peach. It was cute. Right. I love it. I love it. So we're curious to know if you have any memories with Omaha Public Library as kids. I can say it now because I don't think I'm going to go to prison. <laughs> um, you don't think. Oh, do you I have an overdue book. book? I had a book and I loved this book. And I would draw and I would, um, I would use it because it was huge and it had the best pictures in it. And I felt I kept it at school because I was like, well, they can't get me if it's in school. Uh, <laughs> I kept it at the bottom of my desk. And I'm pretty sure it was called All About Africa. Oh, I loved that book. And I thought I was going, I kept that book. It Aww. followed me grade to grade. That tells you how long I had it. Sorry. No, that's OK. I'm thinking maybe I returned it. <laughs> Can someone check? We will check. What's the fine on that? I don't know. Amber's got it. If there's a fine, send the bill to Amber. It's or got to be $8 million. I don't have $8 million. $8 million. <laughs> then I guess we got to get that Sprite money. Exactly. Um, mm -mm, I, I feel like we went to that downtown library a lot when we first got... Um, when me and my friends, when one of us first got a car and a license, uh -huh. because, you know, you're a kid, you can't go nowhere. <laughs> There's nowhere you could go. But if you're like, hey, mommy, I want to go to the library. They're like, oh, you can go. So we would go to the library all the time and sit and read. Isn't that nerdy? But no. we thought, whoa, we are it. 
But in the end, it was also like a fun place to be with a lot of stuff you you know you could learn about a lot of other kids it was fun i love it we always love to hear library stories here love it thank you for sharing <laughs> even if we steal books especially if you steal books <laughs> oh. it's okay you're not I the think, only one <laughs> okay i think everyone here will just keep it a secret yes exactly <laughs> So somebody would love to know where that donut shop is. I think it's in the town. I think you can say it. It's in Blair, okay. Nebraska. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> donuts are great. I'm not going to lie. Good donuts. It's amazing great. donuts. Okay. <laughs> uh, Best you bring donuts ever. I all right, we're gonna, well, you know, we're all like Googling now, like. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, they have a website. <laughs> we didn't spend on a roof, we spent on a web designer. <laughs> I'm bad. So you all bring such humor to your stories. Does it ever seem that people don't take what you're saying seriously because they expect you to be funny? No, because we, <laughs> no, I don't think that's ever, it can still be funny and maybe right. like, but don't do that again at the end, right. <laughs> at the end of the story. You can giggle in it, but I right. think people know that we're, in the end, we're serious. Right. Yeah. And that's the right. truth. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the um, secret to it is you can, let it hits you however it hits you and you can go ah, and then later you can be like oh my gosh i can't believe that you know that's the cover i think comedy provides right you can laugh now because it makes you feel weird and then you right. can go home and really examine those feelings yeah it's easier to swallow yeah 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 somebody said thanks for the antidote about um otomichi do you have any other experiences related to names? Oh, a million times a at work. When the new black girl comes and her name's just a little bit different, you know, there's, so, I've seen so many times where people are like, I can't say her name. Oh my, did you see the new? And I'm like, say the name. How do you say it? And I make them say it. And right. if they don't, everybody falls for it. I go, what's that song again from Mary Poppins? With the, and they'll go, oh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Then you can say Shaquan. Right. <laughs> right. That is my thing that I say all the time. Right. And they don't even get it as they're yelling it out. They don't get it. And then I'm like, okay. Oh. Right. I, get I mean, that happens all the time at work. There are people who, especially um, immigrants, people from foreign countries, and I can't stand it, where they will change their name because like, well, no one can say my name. I go, what is your real name? No, we're gonna call you your real name. You're not D. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, they will literally just change your name. Can you be Sarah? Cause that's easy. No, her name is Serafina and that's what you're gonna call. That's not that hard. Right. So that happens all the time, all yeah. the time in workplaces. If you are at a workplace and people are doing this, everyone listening, stop it. They were named that by their parents. Let them have that name. They probably love their name. Let them have the name and say it with respect and don't giggle, don't make jokes, don't make songs about it. Just say their name. Well, it's wait, now what's the song? <laughs> no, don't it, listen to her either. Just I mean, say the name correctly. Oh, what if CB Wonder's listening? <laughs> I want him to write a song if he encounters a name that is unusual to him. Well, if it's a beautiful name. If it's a beautiful name, a beautiful then it song, moves you. And they love it. Then right. do. And CC me on the email when you send it <laughs> to Universal. Somebody said, did you have to talk? Oh, oh sorry. Wait a minute. Where did it go? Um, to each other? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the questions are like, blip, and then it disappears while I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, wait, where did it go? All right. You made the book very funny, but were there any stories that were particularly hard for you to remember and write about? Um, probably um, the recent, recent ones were the mm -hmm. worst. Cause I was like, oh, that just happened like this year as we're writing it, like it would just happen. So um, yeah, the HR story where they sat me on that little chair, that was, that was painful to, to tell. Cause I was like, that just happened to me. 
Yeah. <laughs> so it still stings. Right. Give it a couple of years and I'll be cracking up about it. But yeah. Right. Some of those fresh ones. Yeah. Whew, but after you've told it like 50 times, some of the other ones were like, oh, this is hilarious. I thought I was Harriet Tubman. Uh, you know, right. that was funny from the start. <laughs> the Harriet Tubman check story was just fine. Right. Fun. Still <laughs> to the part. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about bringing back Afrocom. Yeah. Oh, Jade. I hope Jade is listening. Um, they, I, I don't run Afrocom, um, mm -hmm. but they will be bringing it back. I think this year it's going to be virtual. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, I think if you go on Facebook and look up Afrocom, um, it'll pop up. Um, that's just an Omaha event uh, celebrating all all things black nerdish any type of nerd it's not just for people of color anyone can come and this year it's going to be um zoom it's going to be virtual and they'll just have different workshops talking about you know um uh, uh different comic book characters costumes uh music all sorts of things so yeah awesome. it's coming back it's going to be great i wish it could be in person they're planning on next year I hope so too. We tabled um, there yeah. and it was so much fun. Yeah. We so it. yeah. Jade Rogers is putting that together. Yes. Yeah. We love Jade. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you have to talk to your parents before sharing their story or did you just. Look, my parents do what I want because <laughs> I said so. <laughs> <laughs> no, true. we didn't. And it, it went exactly how we said. She said, don't put me in the book. And I said, okay. And then I put her in the book <laughs> a thousand times. So, so no, I didn't ask her. She did not ask her parents. I'm just saying. And did you have other um, folk, like other stories that you were like, oh, we're gonna, we won't include this, but you did and thought, well, we, we need to include it because it's important to include. All of mommy's stories. Yeah. Any friends or any other experiences? Oh, we never. Okay. I think, no. I mean, it's your experience. I was thinking about, um, yeah, like anything that, I, like your parents or your, your um, any other work friends that you shared their experience that you were like, oh, we're going to include this. And they were like, oh, here it is. Yeah, I think we didn't ask any one like we didn't include stories of anyone whose permission we would need. Right. You know okay. what I mean? Like we yeah. don't need mommy's permission. Yeah. Right. Or Jimmy's permission. Right. I don't need it. Yeah. Okay. I, and, and frankly, I don't want it. Right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and all names were changed. All right. names were changed. All names were changed. We couldn't wow. have one's real name. Except our right. parents. Yeah. It's yeah. mine and yours. <laughs> Yeah. So in the beginning of the book, you explain why you will use black versus African-American. And this person found your clarification helpful. And in the book, there's a story about the man with the shotgun and the man who comes to your assistance is described as being an African-American man. I was curious why he was described as African-American and not black. Right. Um, in that first, when I was talking about why I use black and capitalize it instead of african-american i also was like well, i don't have any strong feelings about it i just like doing it because that teacher hated it so i want to do it in a friggin book that hope he reads it and cries um but i don't have like black versus african-american that I, I don't have any feelings about it okay um but i th think that's not even what it is now now black doesn't mean uh, that it necessarily because black can be Afro Latino mm -hmm. and black can be anyone. Black means the the way you look instead of where you're from. Mm -hmm. So the times they are changing. This book is old news. <laughs> right. Right. So a lot of people want to know what are your favorite Omaha spots and in particular restaurants? My favorite? One of my favorite yeah. restaurants 
is Mantra in Benson. I love everything in Benson. I'm always in Benson. You will see me skipping down the streets in Benson. <laughs> I live in Benson. I can walk there. That's how close I live. Oh, giving too much information. Don't say that. I'm right there. This is my address. No. <laughs> no, I do. I think mantra might be one of my favorites. I just, but I do love, I'm a foodie. So I do love, I, I love good food. I love food. Do you have a favorite? Don't even say yours. 1619. I go there every time. That's not it. 1619, 1914. Nope. That's not it either. 1912. 1912. Benson, I go there every time I'm here. Do you? I, that's the one with loves. the rooftop, right? She never gets the date right, but the rooftop is great. Yeah. I love it there. Okay. Everyone goes there all the time. I go there all the time. I then I go it. across the street to Jake's. And oh. that's where I'm at when that's I'm where here. We do. Awesome. Oh. And then we also have Greens downtown on 24th. They're gone. No. Shit, we'll talk about it later. They're gone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to whoever sent that message. I hadn't broken the news story yet. And now she's going to Sorry. Sorry. Whoever's out there, please <laughs> pick some greens and bring them to Benson. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's so sad. That is. I was thinking about going there right now. No, we can't go. <laughs> so, um, what have you enjoyed about touring or promoting your book? What has been really fun? We are. <laughs> that is for sure. We're the fun part. Um, at the beginning, Lacey came out to New York and we did all these because it's all virtual. Right. So there's a lot of Zooms. Yeah. Like tonight we have an in-person thing and tomorrow night we have an in-person thing. End of in-person things. Yeah. Right. Well, this is like, That's it. this That's week good. is our first in-person. Well, except for the shows were great. We did get to go to, it doesn't really count, but it was in person. It was together. We what? got to be on the shows. Oh yeah. We got to be on. Late night with Seth Meyers. Yes. That was, that was amazing. Those and yeah. the Amber Ruffin show. Yeah. Right. And the Today Show. Yes. Kind of. We were on the Today Show. You but that wasn't in person. No, but we were kind of upstairs. Oh, te we were in the same building. We were in the same building. Okay. Oh, technically. Okay. That's close enough. Close enough. <laughs> exactly. Same building. Lacey, this is a question for you. Do people recognize you more now in Omaha? And if so, what is that like? And do they treat you differently? No, no one treats me differently. A few people recognize me, but it's the same because everyone thinks I'm Amber. So <laughs> when I really get recognized, they're like, are you Amber? You look just like Amber. And I'm like, yes, I'm Amber. Get away from me. Because I want <laughs> I don't say that. Do you Amber. also sign her name? I do. Okay. Uh, then I ask for money. I'm like, do you have a 50? <laughs> Things are kind of hard right now. No. I'm Amber, and I'm so hungry. <laughs> Please give me green. No, people just almost always think I'm Amber and I just run with it. Right. But if okay. some people have recognized me from the book, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Okay. Amber, are you still using a can to hold up your couch? <laughs> yes. Um, my um <laughs> elaborate, please. Uh, yes, please. I my couch at home is in manhattan is terrible it's an old couch and look we lounge hard so <laughs> the bottom thing that holds up the couch you know there's the feet and then yeah. the line across the wood across broke so then i put a can underneath it to keep it up it was just a can of beans it was a can of beans um and adam savage the red-headed myth buster um mm -hmm. saw that and then he fashioned a can. Did you know this? Yes. He fashioned a can um, out of wood, out of the, some like super strong wood, but like didn't make it look nice. Like it could have looked just like the couch, like when he didn't do it, he made it look like a can of beans. Oh my God. <laughs> and hilarious. so he put that under there. That can of beans is still underneath a terrible, oh terrible God. couch. I'm still oh sitting God. on it. That is awesome that you're still sitting on it. It's a sad couch. It's sad. <laughs> I love that you say, I lounge hard. I lounge hard. <laughs> I know. 
Uh, have you considered writing a picture book for children or adults? Write that down. Uh -huh. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> right. <Or adults. laughs> um, no, but a picture book is fun. Picture books are great. And I know an excellent artist. It's me. It's Lacey. It's Bob Ross. It's Bob Ross. Oh, oh, sorry. Can't um, wait. Son and there, that's what the, that's what that show was about on Netflix. It was about his son. Oh, oh. His son is like, I paint now too. And he's like, oh, okay, that's great. Okay. Oh, I have not seen that. Um, I, well, I ruined it. That was it. <laughs> I ruined it and I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, you guys. I ruined it. <laughs> No, you can still watch it. Stuff happens. It's fine. Right. I love it. Somebody said, do I remember you You did connect with Elle DeBarge? <gasps> yes. Yes. We're getting married next week. Um, next week. A lot of people don't know that. It's pretty. It's going to be fun. <laughs> awesome. No, he did respond. He, he thanked us for dedicating the book to him. And yes. then he was like, let's do lunch in LA. And we were like, great. COVID. <laughs> But we're, we're going to catch him. <laughs> yes. When it's all cleared up. Yeah. Everybody's vaccinated. Lunch with Elder Barge. <gasps> oh. Not Amber. Just me. Exactly. Please, I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a question. What kind of strange assumptions do uh, New York City residents make about Omaha? And how do you respond? Um, they say there are black people in Omaha. Yeah. Usually that's what they yeah. say. And I go, we have, um, at that, I mean, at the time I was like, we have two, um, soul food restaurants. I think now there's more, but one less. Cause I can't have greens. <laughs> <laughs> This is horrible. Oh, so sorry. A bit. I'm devastated. Um, but no, I do say like, and I go, we have Bud Crawford. You know Bud Crawford? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. lots of times they go, no, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes they go, yeah, the boxer. I go, yeah. He has uh, Omaha roots. Right, right. Not to mention friggin' Gabrielle Union. Right, right. Um, Simone, uh, what's Simone's name? Simone Sanders. Yes, yeah, Simone Sanders. Mm -hmm. Roxanne yeah. Gay. Mm hmm. Got a lot of people. Right. Tons. Tons. Right. All right. Well, I, that is the end of the questions that we had over, we had 27 questions from the Whoa. audience. That's amazing. Oh, <laughs> So do you all want to talk about like where you'll be tomorrow um, and tomorrow night? Um, so if people want to come and meet you in person, the last social event. Yes. Um, yes. So tomorrow we will be at, it's called the status and it is like a high end purse store in uh, Exarban. Um, it's actually, if you know where the inner rail is, where all that yummy food is, it's right there in the inner rail in Exarban. And that starts at six. Um, Anjali will be performing. Anjali and Timeless, the band will be performing there. There's like a little red carpet event. You can come take your picture and there will be books sold there. If you don't have a book already, come purchase the book, sign it, bring your book. If you already have it, we will sign it for you. So it's a meet and greet. It's going to be great. Um, and then afterwards, there's an after party at the strut. So that's We're at gonna nine. Act terrible. <laughs> We're going to be bad. So that starts at nine. So please come. It's going to be a great event. I love it. And we, actually, <laughs> we have one more um, um, question from somebody who says, Amy, can I ask if she remembers meeting my baby at the Inclusive Communities event? Do you remember that? That's sure. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Michelle. Yes. Sure. I don't know. I love a baby. We do love babies. Aww. Every time I see a baby, so I'm like, cute. I love it. His name was McKinnon, no. and he was like right there with the whole event. We were a lot of us were there at that. It was a great event. Aww. Yay! So, thank you. Thanks for, for coming to that event. Thank yeah, you. absolutely, for sure. Well, thank you so much, ladies. We 
uh, loved having you here. Thank you for being part of this. Uh, thank you for writing the book. It is such an amazing book. And I'm so glad that um, Omaha did choose it for our Omaha Reads. You all are fabulous. And we can't wait to read your next book. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting Thanks us. For this having wonderful. Us. Yes. Thank yes. Thank you. And um, with that, I will end the event. And thank you all who came here. Um, we're, thank you so much for being part of it. And thank you, of course, Sprite for sponsoring. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Sprite's going to send a cease and desist. <laughs> I'm not going to jail for Sprite. I am. I'm, I'm not. going. Oh, and somebody said one last little thing. Somebody said, this is not a question, but just wanted to thank you. Oh, thank you. 29 years and some validation is here because of you two. Wow. Yay. You. Oh, good. Yay. Yay. <laughs> awesome. All right, ladies, you all have a fabulous, fabulous evening. Have a great um, book signing tomorrow and a great uh, strut event, all of that, and have a great time. And then we'll all go back in and not be social for a while. <laughs> Yay! Yes. yes. <laughs> but thank you so much. And we'll end it here, folks. All right. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.